it's Lola, your favorite travel correspondent, reporting to you directly from the beautiful island of Oahu, Hawaii. Before we get into today's pros and cons video, fun fact, the word for thank you in Hawaiian is mahalo. Funny thing is when I say that to people who are not familiar with the language or their culture, they think I'm saying aloha, they think I'm saying hello or goodbye. And so I'll say mahalo and they'll say mahalo. <laughs> but I'm actually just saying thank you. And there is a term for you're welcome in Hawaii, but no one really uses it. So you could just say, oh, you're welcome or whatever. But yeah, if you hear someone say mahalo, they're actually thanking you. All right, let's get into the pros and cons. Pro number one, there are a lot of free classes and lessons that you can take here in Hawaii, specifically on Oahu. I'm not completely familiar with the other islands as far as what they offer, but here on Oahu, you can check out the Royal Hawaiian Center, get a free ukulele lesson, get a free lay making lesson. And in the Ward Village, you can actually sign up for free outdoor yoga lessons. In addition to all of that, there are various different groups that meet up around the island to partake in activities. One particular group that I've actually gotten acquainted with is the Acro Yoga group. If you're not familiar with Acro Yoga, it is partnered yoga. You need at least two people to do it. It's slow moving, but it combines acrobatics with yoga, which is really fun. If you plan on moving here, there are definitely opportunities for you to take free lessons or classes around the island, at least if you move to Oahu. And if you're just visiting, you can also partake in those because these are not only for residents. Pro number two is the islands are very welcoming to brown people. Being a brown person myself, I can tell you, I definitely noticed a shift when I moved here. I noticed that although there is racism everywhere, I have not actually experienced overt racism here. Because this is a melting pot and it's predominantly Asian, there's just a different energy here than on the mainland in certain areas that are predominantly white. For example, I grew up in a predominantly white area, so I definitely experienced racism growing up, but living here, I just feel a little more at ease. I feel like the racial tension towards brown people is non-existent because it's majority brown people. I mean, Asians obviously come in all shades, but we are both minorities. Asians and black people are minorities in the United States, so there's a different level of understanding and there's a different level of respect that's shown. Obviously, there are racist people in every ethnic group and towards various different ethnic groups, but I can just speak from experience here and tell you if you are a person of color and you plan to move to Hawaii or even if you just plan to visit, you will notice quite a difference if you come from a predominantly white area, for example. And obviously, again, it really depends on where you're coming from. Certain areas that are predominantly white are still welcoming to people of color, of course, but here there's just kind of like an unspoken understanding. In fact, when I first moved here, people would refer to me as Sista and I thought it was because I was black, but really it's just the culture here because local Hawaiians, that's how they speak to each other. It's part of the culture. I definitely instantly felt welcome here because it's like, oh, hey, sister. I don't know that they say that to white people. I haven't heard that. <laughs> they say sister or brother, you know? There's definitely that, that like level of camaraderie, I guess, that goes along with us all being minorities. And uh, if you're not a person of color, this might have gone over your head. But <laughs> if you are, you should come to Hawaii at least to visit. You might just feel a little more at ease here. And I'm specifically talking to people of color coming from various parts of the United States. I don't have much experience with being a person of color in other parts of the world because the only other country I've been to is Mexico, but I do plan to travel a lot more soon and uh, you'll have to come along on my adventures and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Pro number three is you can experience a lot of other cultures here if you move to Hawaii without even traveling. So if you plan to move to Hawaii and you really don't have the funds to be traveling a lot, don't worry. You're going to get exposed to a lot of different cultures here and a lot of Asian cultures as well well because this is a predominantly Asian area. But also what's cool about that is it gives you kind of an idea of Japanese culture, Chinese culture, Vietnamese culture, Filipino culture, etc, etc. And if you are thinking of traveling to those places, you kind of get a taste of what you can experience as far as the types of people who are coming from those places because you will meet a lot of people here who are not from here and they can kind of give you a little bit of insight to their culture from back home from where they came from. So I just think that's kind of cool. You can travel without traveling when you live here. Pro number four is the police are really chill here. Now, I don't mean to insinuate that the police don't do their jobs or they don't take safety seriously, but what I mean here is the police are generally kinder here than what I've noticed on the mainland. I got pulled over one time here. It was really strange, actually. The police officer came to my window and she didn't use the term swerving, but she said that I went over the lines on the freeway a little bit. Now, I didn't hear my tires 
go over the bumps. So I honestly thought she was just making it up to try to get something on me so she can give me a ticket. But strangely enough, she was just like, oh, okay. When I explained to her, oh, I, I don't know, I was eating something, I dropped something. Maybe, maybe I didn't realize I like, I don't know, moved my steering wheel a little bit. And she's like, okay, well, I just wanted to check on you, make sure everything's okay. You drive safely. And I was like, okay, thank you. And then I was off. It felt like a, a neighbor just making sure I was okay. You know, my initial reaction was like, oh no, I'm getting pulled over. What did I do? What did I do? But then immediately I realized I didn't have to keep my guard up with her. And she was just being really pleasant and neighborly. You know, it, it felt more like a welfare check than she was trying to give me a ticket. Now, I don't know, maybe she just pulled me over, couldn't find anything to give me a ticket for it and let me go. But the fact is that she still was really kind in the way she spoke to me. And if you live in America, you know how a lot of citizens feel about the police in the United States. I mentioned in another video that the energy here, the vibe here is very neighborly, is very aloha, right? And so even the police officers, unless you're doing something wrong, from my experience, they're more likely to just treat you in a neighborly way rather than be aggressive. So, you know, everyone's experience is going to be different, of course, but from what I can tell, the police officers here, just they live with aloha a little more and a lot of them are locals. So I've seen them talking to the homeless people with that same level of respect or similar level of respect. And it's possible that they did grow up around certain end house people and they maybe do know them. Or if not, you know, there's this practice here of treating your elders with respect. So if you have a police officer who is approaching an elder unhoused person, they're going to say, oh, hey, uncle, hey, auntie. That's just the culture here. And so I don't know, I really appreciate that and that it extends to the police and not just, you know, the everyday person walking around the street. All right, cons of living in Hawaii. Sometimes the water can get contaminated, more specifically after a heavy rain. And I'm speaking more about my experience living in Honolulu. After heavy rain, sometimes the ocean water is brown and it's contaminated with runoff from the streets and sometimes even sewage apparently. And so there are periods of time where you just want to stay out of the water. And that's unfortunate because that's a huge reason why you'd want to live here. Now it doesn't happen a lot, but it's definitely happened enough for me to make mention of it. So sometimes you might experience periods of time where you just can't get in the water. Now, again, that's speaking about Oahu. I don't know what it's like on the other islands, how common that is, but runoff from the streets is a real concern and you just don't want to risk getting sick. That's just something to keep in mind that you're not going to always necessarily be able to hop in the water any time of the year, any day you want to without risking that. So just keep that in mind. Con number two is the rats. Now, apparently there's not a huge rat problem here anymore, but... <laughs> Speaking from experience, I do a lot of photo shoots near the Hilton Hawaiian Village in Waikiki, and I've seen a lot of rats there, specifically in the bushy area, which recently I've noticed they've cut down the bushes, and I'm wondering if it's to get rid of the rats, but the grossest thing ever, I've gone there, seen people leave their stuff out on the grassy area, and I one time saw people leave food out in the open, and they must have been out swimming in the lagoon or on the beach. There were rats in their food, taking their food, running back to the bushes, running back and forth. It was the most disgusting thing ever. I really hope those people didn't eat their food after they came back. I would think it would be common sense to just not leave your food out in the open when you're outside anywhere, but like feel ill just watching that. <laughs> Apparently Westerners brought a species of the roof rat and the Norway rat to the islands. And Polynesians apparently brought rats here 900 years ago. I'm assuming they were stowaways. I don't, I don't see why anyone would want to intentionally bring rats to the island where they plan on living. But because of the lack of natural predators, they're able to reproduce a lot. Now, I did mention in a previous video that there are mongooses here that were meant to take care of the rat problem, but they really don't eat the rats as much as the people who brought them here thought they would. Now, while I'm not aware that rats are a huge problem on the islands, they do bring about five to 10% of damage to the macadamia nut crop on the big island. They also like to nest in banana trees and they cause damage to green fruits as well. Additionally, workers typically don't wanna work around rats, so it does affect harvesting in that way as well. All right, con number three is the beaches here can get really dirty sometimes, partly because people leave trash on the beaches. So if you come here, whether you're visiting or you move here, please, please, please never litter, never leave your trash on the beach. It just makes it unenjoyable for everyone else and it's bad for the animals and for the environment. But unfortunately, a lot of debris gets washed up from the ocean. If you go to any given beach early in the morning, you might even see a lot of debris, a lot of plastics that have washed up 
up from the shore. And during storms and tsunamis, like the tsunami that hit Japan in 2011, debris will actually wash up from other islands far, far away. Even though the beaches are typically beautiful, you will encounter a lot of plastics and sometimes even large debris on the beaches. Con number four is apparently there are no sports teams here. I'm not into sports, so I really don't get affected by this. I didn't even know this until I <laughs> looked it up, but apparently the islands don't have their own local sports teams. Really what you're gonna find here is surfing. Now surfing competitions happen here every year on the North Shore. So if you're into water sports, that's a cool thing to see. But if you're really into football, basketball, baseball, you're probably gonna wanna stick with your home team. <laughs> and if you move here, you're just gonna have to travel back to your hometown to watch the game or watch it on TV. All right, I hope you learned something new. Did any of these pros and cons make you want to move to Hawaii? Make you not wanna move to Hawaii? If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on future videos like this, as well as my other travel content. I'll see you in the next video. Aloha.